uh, welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we started looking at the testing essay. We are trying to identify some very basic issues in testing and we had said that uh, when testing, we observe the failures. We do not observe the bugs, we just uh, observe a manifestation of the bug that is failures and uh, we are trying to understand the terms error, fault and failures. Failure is caused by fault and we are saying that initially errors and faults were synonyms, but then later the IEEE standard said that there is a difference between error and faults because that will help us to express the ideas better. The faults or bugs, these are caused by mistakes or errors on the part of the programmer and these create faults, bugs or defects and these in turn may cause failures. So, I represented that in this diagram. The programmer here manually does many activities, does uh, specification, design, code and the programmer can commit mistakes or errors, can commit many mistakes or errors during specification design code, but not all mistakes become faults or defects. For example, let us say the programmer was writing a code i less than 50 and by mistake or the error wrote i less than 500, but then in the program there is no way that i can have get a value more than 50 and therefore, even though he made a mistake or an error, this does not become a fault or a bug. So, only some of the errors, they become faults or defects or bugs, but then some all the bugs, they do not result in failures. Maybe the test data that is normally given, they do not uh, cause these bugs to express and some of the bugs they cause failures. So, you can say that the mistakes or the errors on the part of the programmer some of them they cause bugs or faults and some of the faults they cause failures. Now, let us look at some facts about errors. <coughs> Even the most experienced programmers, they do mistakes or errors and a typical industry average is uh, 50 bugs per 1000 lines of source code is what good programmers make. And uh, testing reduces the number of bugs, after thorough testing about a one bug per 1000 lines of source code still remain, even if we have tested a program very well, still there may be one bug per 1000 lines of source code. But what are the origin of uh, all these uh, different bugs? 60 percent can be traced to specification and design and about 40 percent from code, it is average figure. Okay, this is just a lighter moment, a cartoon, 
but then that holds a message here. Uh, this is a Dilbert cartoon by uh, from Dilbert.com. Uh, so this is an engineer. Uh, he is Dilbert. He is giving a presentation. Says I found the root cause of our problems. Says uh, it's the people. They may mistakes. They are buggy. And just see here the manager says, did you bring a pen? So, he has already forgotten to bring a pen. So, he has made a mistake. So, people forget and they make mistakes. Even very experienced people, they do mistakes and that is the reason why there are bugs in the code. Assuming that the best programmers make mistakes and that will lead to bugs the code, uh, how do we reduce bugs? Because finally, we have to give a good software to the customers. There are many techniques to reduce bugs. One is to do review, you can do a specification review, design review, code review and that is a very effective way to reduce the bugs. Testing that is a widely practiced and acknowledged to be a good technique to reduce bugs. Formal specification and verification, these are not uh, used for all the part of the code, these are expensive, difficult to use, cannot handle large programs and so on and therefore, their use is bit restricted. Use of a proper development process is a defensive mechanism, it reduces the number of bugs. In this uh, lecture, today's uh, lecture, we will look at the testing, concentrate on testing. The first question that you need to ask is that how do you test a program? Somebody may even ask you this question that how do you test a program? We test a program by giving some inputs to it called as the test inputs and then observe the output and see if the output matches our expectation. If it matches, we say that the test case has passed. If it has failed, we note down for which data it failed and under what conditions. So, we input data to the program, observe the output and check if the program behaved as expected, give inputs to the system, observe the output and see if uh, it is exactly as per our expectation. If it is exactly as per our expectation, then it has passed, but there is a discrepancy, there is a failure and we note down the conditions that is what input we give under what conditions. If the program does not behave as expected, we note the conditions under which it failed and this we call as the test report and this test report based on the test report debugging is done to identify the exact uh, faults or the bugs and then these are corrected. For a typical program in an industry scenario, testing consumes the largest effort among all development phases and it also has the largest manpower. So, if you walk into any organization, you will find that there are more number of testers than there are designers or coders or those who do specification, the analysts. Since the industry needs a large number of testers, implies more job opportunity. A typical estimate is about 50 percent of the development effort is spent on testing. 
because finally, we need to give customer a very reliable software. If uh, we deliver a software which is buggy, the company will get a bad name and uh, the company cannot uh, progress. So, most companies are careful about uh, testing, they spend about 50 percent of the development effort in testing, but then testing is done towards the end of the development life cycle and uh, only 10 percent of the development time is typically taken to carry out the testing, but how does 50 percent of the development effort spent in 10 percent of the development time. The answer is that there is lot of parallelism in testing, many testers can carry out the work at the same time, different parts, different tests, they can execute different test cases and so on and therefore, using a large manpower the testing time is reduced, but uh, there is less parallelism in uh, specification or design, because their work is uh, uh, dependent on each other, cannot really parallelly deploy 100 designers or 100 analysts doing the specification. Over the years, testing is getting complex and sophisticated. The reasons are that the programs themselves are becoming larger and more complex. Newer programming paradigms, test automation, there is sophistication, you must know how to use the test tools and also newer testing techniques. Many new testing techniques have been developed recently and the testers must know these testing techniques. But those who do not know this, they think that testing is not challenging, but over the years testing has taken a center stage and it has become much more challenging than even coding, designing or specification. The reason why this perception exists is that in the early years of testing, testing was done by inputting random test values which is called as monkey testing. Because of the large number of testing techniques and test related innovations, tools etcetera that have come into picture monkey testing is no more used and the testers have their own domain knowledge and not everybody can do the testing and also they must be conversant with the test tools. In the initial years of testing, it used to be called as monkey testing, basically give input data and observe if anything happens. And there were two types of monkeys, initially the dumb monkeys. The dumb monkeys they understood very little and just kept on typing, giving data. Whereas, the smart monkeys, they knew that how the software works, what are the menu choices, what each menu choice needs to do, they can execute specific scenarios and so on. So, the DOM monkeys could only crash the system, that is the only thing that they can notice, whereas a smart monkey knows what data is expected and so on and therefore, is a much more effective tester. But then both the monkeys, they give uh, random inputs. The problem with uh, monkey testing is that with random data, many parts of the program do not get tested. 
the risky areas of the program are not tested well because they are just given random input they are not identified the risky areas and tried to test those and also the worst thing is that many times they just say that the program failed but they cannot identify why what have they been doing they cannot reproduce a failure this is another basic concept that uh, nowadays the testing effort is spread over the entire lifetime in the waterfall model the testing was done towards the end of the life cycle but now it is spread over the entire life cycle we define and conduct unit testing define and conduct integrate testing usability testing user acceptance testing and so on but another basic issue that we must understand before we look at the test methodologies and so on is test how long started to test we, as we test more and more find some failures and so on but then when do we know when to stop testing that is the stopping criterion one way is that as the failure reduces we test we, let's say we say that we test for 2 days and if we don't find a failure we will stop there so that is one way the other way is that the manager can feed some bugs and then as uh, the testing proceeds he will identify whether all those feeded bugs have been found out if all those bugs have been found out and will say that okay possibly the other bugs could have been also been found out and that's a time to stop testing this is another very basic concept is verification versus validation verification is the process of determining whether the output of one phase conforms to the previous phase whereas validation is the process of determining whether a fully developed system conforms to its srs document the verification is done after every phase just to check whether it conforms to the previous phase we can think of verification as the technique for phase containment of errors whereas validation is for the fully developed software we check if the final product is error free what are some of the verification techniques these are review simulation unit testing and integration testing just observe here that unit testing and integration testing are verification techniques because these are not done on the fully developed system the system testing is done fully on the fully developed system and therefore the system testing is a validation technique whereas unit and integration testing are verification techniques we can make further distinction between verification and validation in verification we check whether we are building the system right that is we're not committing any errors try to detect the errors as quickly as possible whereas validation we check that after the final thing we have built whether we have built the correct thing here in verification we check the artifact that were developed after a phase if it conforms to the previous artifact whereas validation checks the final product against the specification the verification activities are done by the developers whereas the validation by the testers verification can be static or dynamic activity in static activity we don't need to execute the program for example review is a static activity or we might have to actually run the program and that's a dynamic activity unit testing is a dynamic activity whereas uh, validation is always a dynamic activity 
we execute the software and check against the requirements. Now, let us uh, look at the testing levels. Software is tested at four levels, unit testing, integration testing, system testing and regression testing. Unit testing, each unit is tested that is each module or function. Integration testing, a set of modules is integrated and tested. The system testing, all the modules after integration that is complete system is ready is tested. In regression testing is done during maintenance, any bugs that are fixed need to do the regression testing. Unit testing, each module unit that is a function or component is independently tested, mostly done by the developers of the module. Whereas, integration and system testing are done by the testing or a quality assurance team and acceptance testing is a validation testing done by the customer. Uh, from this diagram, we can see here that uh, on the development side, we find what the user needs, get the requirements, then design and code and finally, maintenance. And the testing side, unit testing on the code, e integration testing on the design and system testing on based on the requirements and regression testing for the maintenance work. If we look at the testing activities that are done during testing, one is test suit design, running test cases, checking results to detect failures and to prepare the failure list or the test report is done by the tester, whereas the developer debugs and corrects the error. Now, let us have a few quiz. As testing proceeds, more and bo more bugs are di discovered. So, how do we know when to stop testing? This we had said there are two techniques. One is to check that uh, few days of testing does not discover any new failures. And, uh, the second is by seeding bugs. Give examples of the types of bugs detected during unit testing, integration testing and system testing. In unit testing, we can identify the bugs in a unit, for example, logical errors. Integration testing, we identify the bugs that are at the interface of two modules. So, here we identify the interface bugs. System testing, here we identify bugs, uh, for example, performance related bugs, which are not identified during unit or integration testing. Now, let us first look at the unit testing. Here, the units are tested in isolation the units can be functions or modules, but uh, the question is that why not test all the modules together, why do unit testing. The reason is that if we do not do unit testing, it would be difficult to determine which module has the error. In unit testing, we are testing only a small unit and we know that the bug is there, we quickly debug and correct. But if we do not do unit testing, for each bug we have to trace out which unit has the problem and debug it and correct it. So, it becomes much more expensive if we do not do unit testing. In integration testing, we integrate few modules together and then check their interfaces if there are any problems. In integration testing, 
we integrate a group of functions or classes and then find if they are compatible, if they are unexpected parameter values. On the other hand, system testing we look at the entire system. There is another term here smoke test. Before we start to do a test, normally do a smoke test. Just imagine that a plumber has put a pipeline and before he actually puts real water in that and test, you would like to see if there are any leakage and they do a smoke test, see if there are leakage, they put smoke. A similar thing here in software, in smoke test, we just check if some basic functionalities are working and it has become test worthy. We have looked at some very basic concepts in testing. Uh, we are at the end of this lecture. We will stop here and continue in the next lecture. Thank you.